Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Fireball with Ashley Mayfield. Before we dive into today's episode, make sure you grab your cell phone, share this on your social media platforms, and make sure you tag me because I always love to know who is tuning in. Today, we're going to dive in and talk about how to deal with stress as a high achiever. We know stress is inevitable. And if you're a high achiever, stress can be very frustrating. Sometimes you just want to bulldoze over. Sometimes you just want to skip over it. But it's when we deal with stress effectively that we're able to cross our finish line so much faster and so much better. So today I am going to break down the five R's of how to deal with stress. Now buckle up, embrace for impact. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Fireball. And I am super excited today to dive in and we're talking about how to deal with stress as a high achiever. Now, if you're a high achiever, that means you are like a go-getter, hustle, grind, uh, crossing your finish lines, being a visionary, uh, doing whatever it takes to get the job done. These are all things that are like in your vernacular. And as a high achiever, oftentimes we don't just battle stress, we combat stress to like the oomph degree. Some of us actually thrive on stress. We thrive on opposition. Uh, We thrive on adversity. But making sure and knowing how to properly handle stress can be absolutely important. If you've been listening to the podcast for any length of time, and if you haven't, why not? Make sure you go back and listen to episodes because what I say is freaking gold, okay? Uh, But uh, I've actually shared about uh, my mental health journey, which was episode 33. And I just kind of walked you through how I did spend a year in depression, our first year of marriage, and how I've seen counselors. And now how I have a life coach, I have someone that I like pay to deal with my problems and my stress, okay? They walk me through it. Um, But I also think what's really important is that we understand as high achievers that, you know, sometimes stress is self-induced. Sometimes we bring it on ourselves. Sometimes it's unavoidable. But we have to make sure that we're walking ourselves through it properly. I also have been very transparent over uh, Q4 in 2020, the last quarter of the year, I walked through massive, massive burnout to the point where I was contemplating walking away from very important things in my life. No worries, not important people, uh, but important things. And um, this all was could have been pre- uh, preventable, right? And so I'm not saying that stress is always your fault. I'm not saying it's always self-induced. Sometimes we deal with things that are coming at us from all different angles as high achievers, and sometimes they can't be stopped. We just have to learn how to manage that. So today I want to talk about how to deal with it. And as I was looking into this, just reflecting on my own burnout I did from Q4 last year, uh, I found that there are five R's to coping and dealing with stress effectively. And I loved that because as you guys probably remember in episode 33, I talked about DABDA, uh, the five different things that you walk through whenever you experience depression. And so having five R's, I just love that. It just reminds me of church, you know, where they have like every point, the same letter (laughs) or every point starts with the same thing. Uh, I love that. So this is going to be something super easy, super simple. If you are a high achiever, you're going to want to write these things down. If you know someone that is a high achiever, you're definitely going to want to share this episode with them. And like always, I just say pay the fee. The fee is always share this with a friend, share this with someone that you care about, someone that wants to chase after their dreams, their goals, but maybe the stress that are coming at them from being a high achiever is taking them down. Maybe life is taking them out um, or maybe they just don't know how to properly function and manage this stuff. And so we're going to break that down. So the first R that you want to write down is to relax. Now, I honestly feel like that might be the antithesis (laughs) of being a high achiever. We don't know how to relax, okay? But one thing that I found through walking through my own burnout journey is that as a high achiever, uh, typically, typically we operate with a level of urgency, okay? If you're familiar with the color personality, which I believe is episode 27, uh, I do talk about how I am a red blue and that is like just a recipe for chicken little, the sky is falling, okay? As a high achiever, we already operate with a level of urgency and then being very emotionally driven, being highly, uh, I have a high level of emotional intelligence. Um, I operate with a level of urgency on a magnitude, okay? And sometimes, yes, it is very, very detrimental. And so typically when stress comes into my life, I don't know how to relax. I'm someone that 
Uh, I start wigging out. I start complaining, which you guys have probably heard that episode as well. But I think it's easy to forget that sometimes we do just need to take a deep breath. We have the ability as high achievers to go and be proactive, um, to handle conflict, to want to like, you know, charge the mountain at all costs. And one thing that I love that Jason has said when I've walked through a variety of different conflicts is that there's nothing that like 24 hours can't help right? Um, Like 24 hours. I don't even know if I said that accurately, but 24 hours can help so much. Don't feel like you need to pounce on things. And as I've talked to multiple people in my life, uh, I I realize that they struggle with the same thing, that sometimes they just want to check the box off. Like I need to hurry up and operate with a level of urgency. Let me get this done. When change is happening in your life, when stress is happening in your life, yes, we can move on and try to bulldoze over it, but that's not dealing with it right? And today we're talking about dealing with it. And sometimes we do just need to pause, detach, and take a really big mother truck and deep breath and just relax. Maybe we need to take the first 24 hours and uh, just take time off, take a step back, figure out what's going on, be able to you know, go in that prayer closet and say whatever we need to say to God, but get it out, right? We kind of just, before dealing with it, we need to just take a moment and just relax. The sky is not falling. There's nothing that you're walking through that God either hasn't equipped you for or he's preparing you for, right? But either way, his strength is reliable. Either way, no matter what you're facing, no matter how difficult the opposition, no matter how big the adversity, you are going to be okay. And I think one of the greatest things as high achievers is we can realize, number one, that there is so much more to offer in the world as long as we're not consistently operating on our own strength. There are so many times I've reached the end of my limit and I felt like I was done, but really it was such a new realm that I was able to open up because I was able to trust in the strength of Jesus, right? I was able able to have faith that I'm still called to more. Um, I just don't know how it's gonna work out because I can't make it happen. I also think that you're able to be a little bit more level-headed whenever you take a step back. A lot of times we want to be able to react to stress. That's a very low emotionally functioning person. If you find yourself constantly flipping out, constantly getting angry, constantly flying off the handle, you're a very low functioning emotionally person. And we have to start growing that emotional maturity. And that's one thing I'm very passionate about uh, is looking at myself and asking myself, how can I consistently grow into a high functioning emotional leader? Because I do want to make an impact. Sometimes it's as simple as relaxing, sis, okay? Take a moment, take a deep breath. Uh, It's not the end of the world. I promise you can, you know, just take a deep breath. You're going to be fine. The second thing you really want to do is you do want to make sure whatever the stress is, remember we're talking about how to deal with stress as a high achiever, you want to take some time and reflect. Now, I think reflection is something that um, a a lot of leaders can be able to do more, whether that's in your life, in your relationships, in your career and business, You have the ability to pause, take a step back, and reflect on how that situation went. It could even be something good in your life. You could have, like, uh, crushed a massive goal in your personal business, and but pausing and reflecting and saying, what were the steps that I did? What was my thought process? What was the action I took? What did I not put my hands on? And when you reflect, you're going to be able to write this down because oftentimes we think we're going to remember all like the things that we did and we don't, okay? If you're anything like me, we're not going to remember this and it's it's going to be fine. But really implementing a moment where you're not only relaxing, but now you're going to take a step back and you are going to reflect And I think it's important we reflect what change happened. A lot of times when stress comes to our life, we're so busy reacting that we're not trying to uh, just bring solution to it or make sure that our focus is in the right way, right? And so whether it is your career, your relationships, your health, what actually happened and being able to reflect on that and walk yourself through maybe where your emotions can catch up, your mindset can catch up, um, allowing yourself a time to really just process it out. Now, I'm not a big processor. And so, you know, in Q4, when I'm going through burnout, a lot of it is just, woe is me, the sky is falling, like I said, not relaxing, being really in my feelings. And what I had to give myself permission was time to feel that. 
I had to give myself permission, time to process that. And sometimes as high achievers, we just want to bottle things up and keep on going because it's all about the mission. It's all about crossing the finish line. But the reality is the longer we do that, which unbeknownst to me, I've been bottling things up over the last three years. I've been bottling things up over the last 36 months. And when you just put this no bull crap, keep going, bulldoze over my thoughts and my feelings, uh, you know, they're irrelevant. It's all about the finish line. It's all about crushing goals, which I am so here for. I don't know any other way to explain that. Like I am a high achiever through and through. Um, but what happens is that is going to be like a volcano and eventually it is going to erupt out of you. And so taking a moment where you have the ability just to reflect on what happened. And maybe that looks like uh, writing it out. Maybe that looks like recording yourself on video, as silly as that might sound. And I know some of these things sound silly and it's like, I'm never going to do that. Well, you know, how much do you want to deal with the stress? Do you you actually want to get over whatever it is that you're walking through? Sometimes you have to find creative ways to be able to deal with it effectively. Uh, That way you can move on, right? And so really reflecting, give yourself a moment to pause to look back and say, how did this happen? Um, I talk a lot about extreme ownership. What was the role that I played in this? The stress that's come into your life, you might not have caused it. You might have not, you might not have done anything wrong. That's okay. But we still have a responsibility, whether it was choices we've made or choosing how we're going to respond. And so taking a moment to be able to reflect writing things down. I always say, get them out of your head. If you're in your head, you're dead. Okay. And so for me, getting them out of your head is the best case scenario that you can do, but be intentional about reflecting. I promise you it's going to be really beneficial. The third R that you want to do is reassess. Once you've had time to process, reassess what this change means to you. If you have a stress that comes into your life, um, maybe it is you and a friend are no longer in friendship. You and a business partner split up. Maybe you change careers. Maybe you're in a new relationship. Maybe, um, I don't know, you're having a transition in your family with your children. Uh, Reassess what this can mean for you. This is often where people are just going to stick to like the sob story or the doom and gloom, or they're going to stick to blame. And this is a lot of why in the reflection part that we just talked about, I talk about extreme ownership because we don't just want to live our life blaming. That's not an effective way to deal with stress. Okay. And so being able to take on that responsibility of what was my role in this and being able to reassess what that means for you. What does this look like now? What's going to be the new story that you tell yourself? You could sit back and you could say, You know, maybe the stress that happened in your life is you got fired, you got let go, you got terminated. You can sit back and you can say, well, my job sucked, my boss sucked, he took advantage of me, he pulled the rug out from underneath me, which I think when you are in the, uh, you know, reflect stage, you have the ability to like get all those emotions out because I think they're very real emotions and very real thoughts, but that's not how we're going to deal with stress. We're gonna continue to move on from that story. And I think once you reassess the story, it can go from this doom and gloom to maybe God is transitioning to me because there's something better for me out there. Maybe God is uh, realigning everything and he's going to open up a fresh door, a new door. And I'm literally going to walk myself through this transition and I'm going to reassess the story that I tell myself. And this is so powerful. This is the work that most people won't do, right? It's the work of intentionally talking ourselves through things and intentionally taking ourselves from one path down another. You need to create a new belief system. You need to create a new why. Okay. And, um, I think a lot of times, even when you're reassessing, this is a perfect moment to be able to release the, the burden and the weight that we often put on ourselves as high achievers of doubt, of guilt, of shame, of responsibility. Sometimes we want to take ownership for other people's actions. I am not going to take ownership for other people's actions, right? I'm not going to take credit when people win, and I'm not going to take credit when people lose or people fail. But I still have a responsibility, and there's a difference between taking uh, credit and having responsibility, okay? But I think it's so important as high achievers, whether a a stress came at you, you caused a stress, you came in the middle of a stressor, no matter what the situation is, you've got to release all that negative stuff. The, The stuff that weighs us down, the stuff that makes us believe we can't move forward because the reality is 
you can move forward and you have to move forward, right? Otherwise, you're never going to finish dealing with the stress. But part of taking on the responsibility is also letting go of all the negative self-talk, all the negative things, the doubt, the guilt, the shame. You're not meant to carry any of that, right? And I can tell you that there's a lot of times where I've put that on me, um, where I've tried to uh, put on a lot of guilt, like, you know, people, especially like you guys know, I have a successful online business and uh, in one of my streams of income and, you know, being able to say, oh, well, people, maybe people aren't uh, where they need to be because of me. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And it's so easy to want to have that self-doubt. Um, instead of really being able to look at the facts. So just make sure you reassess that story that you're putting in your head. Um, I can tell you that I'm walking through something right now, uh, this new thing that I'm getting ready to launch that I'm so excited for you guys. It won't be out for a little bit, uh, but I'm I'm walking through the reality of the stress. I'm walking through this and it's so easy while I'm reassessing um, for me to convince myself that I'm not good enough, that I'm inadequate or I don't have what it takes to be able to walk into this new level. And what's so crazy is I've had to take a step back over the last week and as I've been very emotional and I've had to reassess and say, you know what? No, I am good enough to do this. Like, look at everything I've done. Look at all the success I've had. Look at the 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 money I've been able to make and the good I've been able to put into the world and the impact and the influence I have. Why would this not work? And I've had to reassess my own belief system instead of just embracing the stress and instead of uh, taking a back seat and letting it pile on, pile on, pile on. I'm actually like leaning into the opposition. I'm leaning into the negative self-talk and I'm denouncing it. Like I'm not going to tolerate that. And so I want to challenge you. If you have a lot of stress coming your way, you need to reassess what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what moves you're making, what's your belief system, because you really do have the ability to turn this around. Um, uh, the next thing is I would uh, rehearse, and this kind of goes into what I just ended. When change happens um, with people, okay, when stress comes into your world and it has to do with a person, which typically I'd say nine times out of ten it does, right? And again, this could go back to you and your spouse are fighting, you and your kids are not on the same page, your boss is uh, your boss has disappointed you and you need to address it. You've got employees that aren't doing what they need to do. You have a business partner that you guys are in a, you know, coming to a head, whatever. I think it's so important that you rehearse. That is the fourth R that you want to write down. You need to rehearse not only conversation, but your action steps. And I know this sounds really silly, but a lot of times whenever we go to deal with conflict, remember, I'm all about conflict resolution, conflict management. I think it's so important that we're having these healthy conversations that we're calling things as they are, that we're um, calling people out sometimes that's necessary, right? But it's so important that you rehearse that because oftentimes when we get into it and we're like hitting the nail on the head, sometimes we can lose our cool, we can fly off the handle, we can exaggerate a situation, we can make the situation worse. Other times we go in and we don't stand our ground. We don't have a backbone. We don't stand up for ourselves, right? We don't speak up. We, we start saying, oh, it's okay. Oh, it's not a big deal. No, things are a big deal. And we've got to be able to say, you know what? That was a really big deal. And I do accept that apology. Instead of just saying, when someone apologizes, oh, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It happens to everybody. No, it doesn't happen to everybody. Like if they made a mistake, you need to let them apologize. And you need to let them know, I appreciate that apology because you didn't call the right shot. And I appreciate you apologizing right now, right? And so we need to be able to rehearse what are our action steps going to be walking into this conversation, uh, handling this stress. And that might look really silly, like you going in the mirror and talking yourself through, how are you going to open the conversation? What's going to happen if they say this? What's going to happen if they get angry? What's going to happen if they don't get angry? And I've had to do this so many times where I... In my head, I thought, what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is they're going to start yelling at me. Okay, am I going to choose to get triggered in that moment or am I going to choose to keep my cool and let them sound like a psychopath? Okay, and sometimes, like, I'm not saying I'm always good at keeping my cool, but sometimes I've had to learn, like, just bite your tongue because eventually that person's going to understand that yelling and screaming or however they're handling the situation or whatever they're saying might not be accurate. Sometimes the loudest person in the room is the dumbest. Okay. And so uh, that's a good tip for the wise there. 
<laughs> and so being able to rehearse that way, uh, you don't lose your cool. I can tell you um, over the last few weeks as I've started to walk into a new stress, um, I've had some things hit me emotionally that I probably wouldn't allow to hit me emotionally, but because uh, my energy has been really depleted, I've kind of been creating like scenarios in my head. Have you ever done that? And so rehearsing these scenarios out and even asking a friend, I had to phone a friend um, a few weeks ago and I'm telling her the story and she's just like, dang, Ashley, this person doesn't hate you. Like you are ample, like you're going to war with someone that's like not even like in battle with you. And I had amplified this situation so much in my head. And one of my friends told me, she uh, she said, uh, dang, Ashley, don't shoot a cockroach with a bazooka. And that meant so much to me. Like don't shoot a cockroach with a bazooka. And sometimes if we do not rehearse what it is we're gonna say or how we're gonna respond when stress is happening, when we have to walk in and have that conversation, we can take, like we're ready to like go to battle. We're I don't even know what that is, if that's battle. We're ready to go to battle. We're ready to go to war. And the problem is really this big. So maybe making sure things, and I don't know that this is applicable, but the, the terminology you're going to understand, making the puni- making sure the punishment fits the crime. Making sure uh, the way that you handle the situation fits the situation and don't shoot a cockroach with a bazooka, basically. And then the last five is you want to make sure that you uh, ritualize. I don't know that I like that R word, but the premise of it is that even when stress is coming into your life, if you're in your process of dealing with it, don't let the rest of your life go to hell in a handbasket, okay? If you're someone that like, um, and this is one thing that I do very well that I have uh, conditioned myself for. It's not something that just like magically appeared. I had to work for it and condition myself for it. But when I am uh, walking through how I deal with stress, I make sure I keep up uh, my personal development plan. I keep up uh, my skincare routine. Those things are very important to me. I'm not just going to let myself like fly off the Richter scale, just, you know, whatever, float as the wind takes me just when I'm dealing with stress. I'm going to continue to keep myself grounded. I'm going to keep myself grounded. Grounded. I'm going to protect myself from trying to just tell everybody and gossiping just so I get attention, which I've done a podcast episode on as well. Uh, if, if you're someone that you've got these practices in your life, maybe you exercise regularly, maybe you like to journal regularly, maybe you like to pray or meditate regularly. When you are going through stress, that's not the time to throw in the towel on those rituals. That's not the time to throw in the towel on the things that you typically do for yourself, right? That's the time to lean in. That's the time to double down. That's the time to go to war. Like it's Super Bowl time. You've done it. And that's that's what's so great about having practices in your life is you're not just doing it when it feels good. You're actually doing it in moments when you are dealing with stress because it's going to bring uh, just a sense of peace to you. It's going to bring a sense of accomplishment and purpose. And the last thing you want when you're dealing with stress is to feel like everything's out of control. And sometimes I do believe as high achievers, we let that be self-induced because if one thing's got our attention, we can amplify it and make it seem like our whole world is out of control. And we need to start being a little bit more grounded. And so keep those rituals uh, that you do on your daily basis. And it's also a good time to be able to say, what new rituals do I need to do? Um, Maybe when you get in the first R, the relaxing, maybe you're just like, you get so stressed, you decide you're going to light some candles and take take a bubble bath. And now that's like a new ritual that you're going to do in your life is at least twice a week, you're going to treat yourself to some self-care, some self-love, and uh, you're going to take care of yourself, okay? So those are the five R's of dealing with stress. I hope you wrote those down. I hope you took notes. In fact, I want to know what is the one R that you do not do very well and you need to start doing, make sure you post it in your stories on social media. Tag me. I always love to see who's watching and I love to repost those. Until next time, I love you guys. I'm rooting for you and uh, go rock today and go handle your stress well because you can. Talk to you guys soon. Bye, friends. (laughs) 